I'm uh, John McLoon and I work for Wolfram Research um, and we make things like Wolfram Alpha, the computational knowledge engine and also software products like Mathematica. Wolfram Alpha is a semantic uh, knowledge engine. So uh, superficially it looks a lot like Google, so people are very familiar with that. It's got a search box, you can type a phrase in and it, uh, it responds with an answer. The key difference is that we're not trying to search the web for a page that might be relevant matching the keywords that you've typed. We actually have the data built in to Wolfram Alpha and all kinds of different data sets and different fields. And then we have knowledge layered on top of that to try and take the data, match it to your question, and actually produce an answer from the data sets. So that might be a simple query returning a fact that you've asked for in the same way that you might use Google for. But it might also produce an answer to something that's never been asked before. So you could ask a question that has to be inferred from the data, and that requires knowledge, expertise, and computation that's built in into the system. So an example of how this might work, uh, perhaps using things like uh, our nutrition data or, or, um, or um, exercise data, is that uh, the question you might have might be very precise. It might be that I've done 70 minutes of, of fast walking and I've eaten three jam donuts and a boiled egg. And that, the chance you're going to find a web page out there that describes whether or not I've uh, made a net gain in calories or net loss in calories, have I exercised off that food, is very unlikely because no one will have asked that precise question before. So we have the raw data on the models for how exercise uses calories. So we can translate from your age and weight and what you've done for how long, converting units like minutes and seconds uh, in order to produce a calculated answer for what calories you've used. We know about the individual food ingredients and can combine those to work out the calories you've consumed and do a computed answer to give you uh, a summary of whether or not you're doing sufficient exercise. And when you look at the more search engine approach, you'll get general advice pages and opinion, but you won't get precisely factual results like that. The amount of data that, uh, that is relevant within healthcare alone is, is, is quite astronomically large amounts of, of information. If you look at things like the human genome, there's a trillion characters in that, in just the, simply the reference genome, plus all of the uh, relationships of what genes are known to have what effects. But even within routine healthcare, a single drug goes through huge trials where large numbers of people are tested and the the benefits and, and costs of the drug are, are calculated, but none of that data actually reaches the end, the end consumer, or even the doctor. What they get is the summary, the overly, overly summarized version, after the data has been analyzed and computed and it comes down to a simple instruction like take one or take two, uh, depending on your age. Now the reason we get the simplified versions is that it's too complicated for anyone to use. The, the analysis takes uh, the researchers hours or days to do. But if we can encode that knowledge, we can actually make the original data available. So rather than having to uh, take the summary version of, we're going to give you so many milligrams of this drug, we could work out that if you're a larger person or an older person, what the, a more appropriate dose is, so that we don't have to be overly cautious, or we could weigh up the, the benefits against the risks in a more precise way, given the age of the person, or the cost benefit analysis could be worked out more precisely. And by putting those tools, rather than just the raw data, into the hands of the professionals, then they can make much more informed decisions. Looking ahead, I think in quite a short amount of time, we can start seeing the early benefits of this kind of technology. We can pick off uh, the low-hanging fruit, the easy targets, where there's clearly understood models or very well-organized data, and start making more accurate, more useful information available. Of course, this is a never-ending task, and uh, you know, perhaps over a longer period of time, maybe looking more than five years into sort of 10 years ahead, then the real benefits uh, are much, much greater because the day-to-day -day act of healthcare is generating day-to-day -day data. It's too expensive to go out and, uh, and compare two seemingly unrelated drugs to see if there's any cross-correlation between them. But the real world is doing that experiment as we speak. There are people out there who are, who are being given, uh, not under trial conditions, but under real world conditions, being given medicines, and the data is being accumulated. So if we could tie up the whole data infrastructure of the health system into the ability to interrogate, analyze, and query it, then as a doctor, you could take the most obscure questions and do real-time analysis. If a patient's taking drug A and B and complains of some new symptom, you could actually look through the data itself and see if that's, uh, if that's an unobserved, unnoticed symptom of the combination of those drugs. And so these kinds of open questions, um, you know, it, we're a way off because there's a lot of infrastructure to be built. But the more you give people the ability to ask questions, the more they'll ask them and the more they'll get the benefit from asking the questions. 
but right now we don't bother asking because we know it's beyond our reach to get the answer. So the, the effect on the relationship uh, between the different players within healthcare is, is going to be quite subtly at first, but quite fundamentally in the long run changed by improved access to information that those things that are considered uh, quite often secret will actually become an asset of, of the companies. The drug companies will want to provide more data because if, if their products are better understood and can be used in a more focused way, they'll be more beneficial, be used in a greater way. If the doctors can feed the information back into the system so that they as doctors can get useful information out, then they'll become part of that uh, analysis rather than simply consumers of it. And the end patient wants to be able to ask questions as well. They'll sometimes get it wrong, they'll take the wrong interpretation, but the more that they can get involved in their own health, the more that they can have a proper dialogue with the doctor, that they can look for themselves whether or not they think um, the decisions are correct. And, and that's a healthy thing because it allows the, the concerns of the, the patient to come out and to be discussed and to be informed by the expertise of the doctor rather than at the moment they go away and they grumble and complain and they think something's wrong and no one understands them but there's no there's no mechanism for them to to engage because they're excluded without the knowledge to me innovation is is it's it's a long long march that we have to go on we can see in the distance these great potential goals these sort of dreamlike goals at the moment of what if uh, you could know everything about anything. But innovation is, is steps towards that. And each step is, is exciting because the, each step is a step in the right direction. So every day we, we've got no shortage of thing, work to do and things that need building and problems that need solving. Um, the excitement is each time we achieve one of those, we take that step closer to this sort of visionary goal. The process of setting out on, on this sort of march towards the goal isn't always the route that you anticipate. And one of the exciting things is the, the discoveries of alternative routes, very often, that sometimes this comes out of our own work, that we set out to build a technology, and it's only through the act of building it that you come to understand what you're really trying to do. And and suddenly clarity forms and you realise that, that the thing you were trying to achieve is only a part of a greater goal or fits with some other goal. And sometimes it can be exciting because it comes from other people, projects that we have that are on that sort of long-term back burner because we know how much work's required suddenly become more feasible when a new piece of technology arrives that somebody else has, has sprung upon the world and, and we all get excited and say, well, this suddenly cuts that, that uh, task down from being a five-year task to a one-year task. We should take it on now. The world's ready for this. And, and a lot of the way that technology has, has worked has been like that, that the, the internet technically existed um, for many years before, but it was a niche thing that was of, of no value. But the moment a certain collection of tools came together with a certain set of businesses, um, the invention of, uh, of HTML and web browsers and search engines being perhaps some of the, the, the most significant ones, but the inclusion of people actually providing useful content all came together at the same time and suddenly something that might have otherwise taken years uh, to happen happened overnight and we we still have these things happening today perhaps not quite so obviously but uh, but there's still surprises that accelerate things